To seek more answers to the many questions surrounding the abduction of the girls and source for solutions on how to recover the girls, then patient Jonathan summoned women stakeholders at the presidential villa Abuja. We need to know the truth. We need to ask ourselves questions. It's only by asking questions we can find a solution. Because by fighting, we cannot find solution. Asking questions does not mean you are doubting that children did not miss. Because without you getting figure, facts, without you getting facts, you will not get an answer. Because if you kidnap my child, I won't sleep. I won't let you go free. So these children are my children. So I won't sleep. And allow you to take my children and do politics. No. We must protect our country. We must protect our dignity. We must protect our image. And we must protect our children. Because after the children, we are the next. We are the mothers. We are the next. My colleagues in the neighboring country, Cameroon has written to me, called me, how can I help? She gave me some questions, but I don't know what to answer her. Because you can't answer a country. You are dealing with another country. You answer the person with she say, he say. <laughs> Paper publication, TV. No. Nijay wrote me, I want to help. I can't answer. Child wrote me, I want to help. Again. The head of WAEC National Office, Mr. Charles Eguridu, was at hand to provide answers to the myriad of questions asked by wives of governors, female legislators, leaders of various women organizations, among others. Every day, the figures keep changing. The stories keep um, adopting new shades. And um, we as lay people, we really don't know what is happening. First of all, the number of the kidnapped children. We've had 160 something, we've had 50, we've had 234. Today, one of the papers carried 269. And we really don't know the school authorities, the principal of the school is in a, the best position to tell us how many students were in that compound that day? At least we can start from that point. Uh, every day you get more revelations coming out of the papers. And I, I read in the papers that apart from the religion Islam, celebrating and respecting women and looking at female children as their gold, their treasure, that is what I read. And I was very impressed because I didn't even know that much that that religion celebrates cares deeply for female children because the Islam religion specifies that the man of the house protects and cares and even feeds the female child. So I'm actually in a state of shock that this unfortunate thing can happen to these children. I was really dumbfounded today when I heard again that the school was burnt. Like you said, Your Excellency, so many different things are being said in the papers. The school was burnt, and so all the children's identity was burnt with the school. <laughs> but, I, but I am now, I, am, I, I was very, very, <clears throat> I was gratified when I heard that you had asked the uh, DG or chairman of WAEC to be here. Because I believe that the identity of the children should not be a question. A fact 
finding mission is very critical. Where are Christian Amapos of Nigeria? Nobody has gone to Chibok in the name of reporting. Journalists, in, in, jointly with our security agents, should visit that school. The school is not a no-go area. It is still our land. It is still in Nigeria. And I'm sure people who came from Chik Chibok, there are still people inside there. Is it possible? Okay, because they said, I also read that some escaped. Is it possible to, who have seen those children that escaped? Is it possible to invite some of those children, the school authority, even the parents of the missing children, so that we can talk to, to them and really find out what is happening? Because the whole thing is becoming too easy. Gentlemen, please, I have a question that has been bothering my mind, and I just want to know, when the kidnappers came to kidnap the girls, what happened to the security personnel or the MIGAD that nobody trailed them, nobody followed them to even find out how far they had gone? And with these days of GSM, nobody could call and tell the security personnel that they've gone, to, they've gone north or they've gone south. You know, we haven't heard anything from that. And uh, what I also want to make emphasis on is, you know, I think these insurgents, whoever they are, what they are trying to do, of definitely they've kidnapped these girls, they've broken our hearts, but please let us not allow them to break our spirits. We should all pray together. So. Their identity will be required because we get conflicting information, conflicting figures. And if they claim that these children have been taken off to other countries, that presents an international problem diplomatic problem, as you have said. Therefore, it is very, very important. Like, even in Nigeria, missing persons, they put their pictures for people to know and help in the search. And this has become a universal search. Your Excellency, I'm also worried. These spates of demonstrations are elitist. Elite women are doing that. And they're saying, let, let the children go. Who are they talking to? The people that are holding them are not in Abuja. When they took these girls, there must have been a rout. So the route they took, the villages, the communities, they didn't notice anything strange. Your Excellency, at the border, if it is true that they left Nigeria. Is it that our border is just open? People can cross and come in? And that is not true. Because this disturbance of our development, maybe it's deliberate. Those who don't want maybe Nigeria or, or Africa to develop, that's another angle, diplomatic angle. But for the now, ma, I think we do need this strategic, uh, strategic team, any dialogue team, there must be representative because when in, in Sudama, the first truce they had, the women had to go to the war front and they were calling their sons one by one, Abdul, come here. They will come up and they drop the, 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 and they drop the gun. Sunday, come here. I am your mother, come here. Man, it takes really, plus the questions, plus the thinking, plus the strategies. And we have to be directly involved on the first table. It's possible for them to know, okay, mom, mothers are asking questions. They are hurt. Believe me, their conscience will prick them along with their prayers. And we'll get the, how would I put, the concise strategy of being listened to and to getting the solutions, ma'am. Was there no adequate uh, security when uh, uh, it was a known fact that girls were in that school writing an uh, exam? <laughs> And I think uh, this question also that we've all been asking here should actually be directed to the principal of the school, the first lady of the state, and the government of Borono State. I think they owe us an explanation. Because we are in Abuja, we are far away from uh, Borono. If an issue is happening in uh, Abuja, I think the first person we should be talking to should be the minister that is in charge of FCT. And so for me, ma, if there's a way that we'll get the principal of the school, 
the Wayek man is here, he may not have as much information as the school principal. Those people on ground there should be able to tell us exactly. We are not doubting that uh, girls were not abducted. Yes, they were abducted. That we have all agreed on. But the truth is that we don't know the number of those girls abducted. So even if we are looking for these girls, how many people are we actually looking for? It's very important. I don't believe in the school of thought that will decide to go to the streets. We have shown our concerns. Our hearts are bleeding. People are saying, it has been happening, not just about this social number of people that we are kidnapping that school, that it's been happening. And if it has been happening, what did we do? Who did we report to? Because at least in my village, how many polls? You see police station. Apart, and these are states where we have emergency room, which means at every point, there are certain strategic points that you see military men. You see policemen and all that. What it simply means is that if I have 100 policemen in the state that there are no emergency rules, in those areas you have like 300, for instance. And so where is this school located? Does Chibok have a divisional police post? We are there left without security at all. And if they were left without security, what are the intentions? So, ma, these issues are critical. We are women, we are strategizing. But the truth of the matter is that so many things and so many questions have to be answered. As we are talking about what happened to these children and the way it happened, I want us to look to the other side. What are we doing? to guide against anything of this sort. There was a loophole. The security on ground on that day wasn't enough. If we say it's not enough, how are we going to make amends? In a situation of this nature, where are the community, the traditional rulers, in that environment, the local government chair people, the people in that place. We must talk in concrete terms, not talking abstractly. As it is now, many things are still abstract to us. And we are just using theory to ask questions. So my suggestion would be for us to be properly briefed from the people who are wearing the shoes. Knowing the danger in conducting exams in the northeastern part of this country. The Honorable Minister wrote to the governors of Borno State, Adamawa State, and Yobe State that the candidates in the Federal Unity Schools be assembled in the respective state capitals where they are to sit the examination in safe location. When we made that representation to the three states affected, none of them responded to the Honorable Minister's request. And what response we received was so disheartening. They were told that this, they have security in place for the candidates and that if we should come to the school and indeed other schools to conduct the exam there, that they are not ready to relocate their students from Chibo and indeed other areas to Medjugorje or nearby locations where the security agencies could provide security. So if we failed to conduct the exams, the world would blame us. 530 candidates registered us for this exam by our records. From our records, the school before now was a girls school. But for the 2014 examinations, 135 male candidates registered for the examination as part of this 530. And 395 female candidates registered for the exam. 
And when we inquired, we were told that the school is now a big school. But they have not written to WAEC to effect the change of the name from a girls secondary school to a mixed school. And I have with me the photographs of the candidates and their names, the date of birth, and the ages of each of the candidates. The Borno State Commissioner for Women Affairs, Hajia Inagala Dima, who stood in for the wife of the State Governor, Nana Shatima, also told the meeting that 53 girls are currently in the custody of the State Government. I spoke with the principal of the school, and as of now, what she told me personally was that we have about 53 girls that are with us now. Out of the 200 or 200 or something that have been appointed. This prompted more questions from the women who wanted to know how many students slept in the hostel that night, why only the girls were abducted, why the school principal withdrew after giving information about the rescue of some girls by soldiers, and whether it is true that the girls are being married out. You are able to divide these children and move 189 to another school to go and sit exam. And those people were not hurt on the road and they were not kidnapped on the way. They were not stopped on the way. And you two were not stopped on the way. That means the governor provide a good, adequate security. At which point in time now did the remaining one um, 206, without kidnapping you, the Waiyake people, <laughs> and with, without kidnapping the teachers, with not, without kidnapping the invigilators of the Waiyak, and without kidnapping the boys among them, because Let's change. Without kidnapping the boys among them. At what point in time now did these kidnappers come in and now carry these children? Ma'am, my major concern has been before the kidnap of those children, we have had so many issues. We have so many issues of uh, attack on schools in that area. So we have expected that uh, in every school, they should have fortified security in, the, in, in schools in the Northeast. But more worry I have is up to this moment, man, I'm confused. I don't know what the insurgents they really want from Nigeria. What did they really want from us? When we have the issue of the militants in the, in the South South, we know what they're asking for. Is the control of the, re the resource control. But what is the major thing, unless we know, and they're from reports we have said some have been arrested, some have been arrested, have they not been interrogated? Then we can know what we are going to, because we should know their grievances. We should know what they want from this nation. And then we know how, what, we are, what we are going to, how we are going to settle it. What I'm trying to say is that, for us not to have students for a particular zone in this country, having an eternal school phobia, I think I will advise and suggest that they should send security men. Please, they should go around these schools now, the remaining schools, because schools are in session. They should secure these schools. And if not, that is in these zones, if not, maybe they should relocate the remaining uh, students in these schools. It's as if we are just going round and round because, you know, we need to know what exactly happened. We need somebody to give us a first class happening of that um, incident. Because I can't imagine a group of people or whoever they are coming into a school compound and cutting away the student just like that without anybody doing anything. And these are defenseless children. Does it then mean if it were to be at night, does it mean they don't have a house mistress or they don't have um, security people? Why we are here, you see, we are women. We have come out. I want 
tell you the truth. We are mothers. We must feel the pains to save our nation. We must take the pains to save our children. We must take the pains to save our people. We are here. Remember my comment? I said that this is just the start. Within three days, God will help us. We will come out with something. Amen. 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 What are these Boko Haram fighting for? And every day they are killing people. He said that when they finish killing the people, then who will tell you? Those that are engineering this killing. People are engineering this killing and you have refused to expose them. And for the fact that you refuse to expose them, you will keep on dying. Until you are ready to expose this incident that is happening in this country. My heart is bleeding for poor innocent children. My heart is bleeding. But one factor is that we are not sincere to ourselves. If you really say we are sincere, I want to ask, because all of us went to school, if you write Wayek, does it mean that it's only Shibok children that register, or how many other schools register in that same school? So you can see, the information is very hazy and very conflicting and extremely misleading. You see, we are trying to cause confusion in this country. And people doing this should think twice. Another version said that before this school was asked to reopen for this student to write these exams, that the parents' teachers' association had a meeting and they pleaded with the state government to fortify security in the school. So where were the security men? During the Metasina regime, <coughs> we knew them by their dressing and where they lived and what they were agitating for. Yes. During the aggrieved people, I don't call them militants, aggrieved people from the Niger Delta area, they were agitating for resource control. Now these Boko Haram are faceless. Today we will hear that they are dialoguing with them. Tomorrow the dialogue has failed. Mm -hmm. What is happening in this country? Are we sure we want to remain one? We must remain one. There are targets you cannot identify, but you can read the handwriting. You can check the pattern. Each time there's, there's, there's a bombing, you find out that with due respect, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria pays respect to the lives that have been lost. Terrorists will be monitoring this and they'll be looking at the timing. I do want to suggest and submit this afternoon that the women of Nigeria collectively move that the president henceforth should not visit site because he can be a target. It is not when the president goes to the site that shows the president with his sincerity like in the National Conference says, sovereignty lies in the hands of the people. What the, the terrorists want is to cause disaffection between the Nigerian people and their wonderful government. What they are trying to achieve is to instill fear in us, confusion. And for us to be gathering and cowering in corners, we are Nigerian women. We do not cower. We do not fear but we gather and we come up with solutions. So let this be one of them. That together we stand in unity under your leadership. That we can do this, working in truth and sincerity. The president of NEJ talked to our members. Why did they talk to our members? They talked to our members because some of our members have contributed to the democracy of Nigeria. Why some? are working for individuals or groups. And the president and some of us said, look, the first thing we must do as journalists is to make sure that there's peace and unity in our reporting of matters and issues. How do we do our reporting? Am I reporting for a particular group or for Nigeria to stay as a country? My own is pure and simple. Urgent sickness need urgent treatment. <laughs> All of us here know how this thing started. I know, Mrs. Tony know how Abakoya started. 
Mrs. Tony know how metamethacine uh, is started. If they go and kill me tomorrow, I have no regret. I will be 75 on July 25th. <laughs> we know this is the solution. Drive away the governor of uh, uh, Boronu State. Put state of emergency. Yes! Let us fight for her to it's an eyes of that you have to do. Arising from the discussions, a six-member committee to be chaired by wife of the Borno State Governor, Haji Anana Shetima, was set up with a mandate read out by the Secretary of the Meeting, Dr. Asmao Abdul Kadr, a special advisor to the President on Gender. This committee, I mean this uh, house has resolved that the committee formed, chaired by the Governor's wife of Borno, will come along with the following. One, the principal of the school. Two, the gate man of the school. Three, at least two teachers from the school. Four, two teachers conducting YA exams. Five, chairman and secretary of PTA of the school. Six, two matrons, that's the house parents. Seven, two parents whose children are still missing so that we can ask them questions. And then the next one, two parents whose children had ex escaped. Next, two students that escaped, and we promised to mask them, that is to protect them, while we hear their voices. Then the principal should also come along with the school register so that we'll know the exact number of the students missing. We want to see the truth so that by Sunday, our children are released. If by Sunday the children are not released, we will march to Borono. The governor will give us our children. The governor of Borono will give us our children. The commission of uh, education Borono will give us our children because Wayek has told us the truth. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs>